Good morning and <clears throat> welcome to this service of morning prayer from St. James Cathedral here in Toronto. I'm Carol Casella and I'm delighted to welcome you to worship with us this morning on uh, this Saturday after Pentecost, uh, week of Pentecost. Um, we're going to be using the Book of Alternative Services, as, as always, um, for morning prayer. And um, our psalm is Psalm 71, if you want to mark that before we start. It's found on page 795. And... Um, Today we're celebrating the life of Columba, an abbot of Iona, who was born in 521 AD, a remarkable, remarkable man. He's um, credited with uh, spreading Celtic Christianity into um, what was still Ireland at the time, but uh, into uh, northern, what we know of North Scotland. Uh, to the Gauls and the Picts who lived there at that time. Um, he founded an abbey. Uh, he had founded a number of churches in Ireland. Um, quite a scholarly man, had studied widely. He was uh, of striking appearance, apparently, quite a, a large and sturdy figure. His voice was said to that it could be, it was a loud, melodious voice uh, could be heard from one hilltop to another. Good in an evangelist. Um, a very learned man, studied deeply, and uh, then uh, after having founded a number of churches, um, decided to, um, to go to Iona. There's some doubt as to exactly what that was about, but but um, there was a pilgrimage. He might have regarded it as a pilgrimage, um, possibly for some conflict that he had been involved with, uh, although apparently he was cleared of that, but he had a sense that uh, he needed to uh, make this pilgrimage. And wonderful that he did, um, founded an amazing um, community on Iona, the only center of literacy in the area. Uh, he was widely regarded as a, as a holy man, uh, not just a holy man, but as also a diplomat among the tribes. He played a major role in the politics of the country, very energetic in mission work, um, founded a number of churches as well as the monastery on Iona, which um, he worked to develop into a school for missionaries. So remarkable, remarkable man, renowned uh, man of letters, transcribed over 300 books. So um, his energy and dedication will be with us this morning as we worship and we give thanks for his example and for his work uh, among, among the, in Scotland. So let us begin. <clears throat> Alleluia! The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. O come, let us worship. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. O oh, come, let us worship. Say the Venite together. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, 
and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. O oh, come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Alleluia, the spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. Oh, come, let us worship. Our first reading today is from the book of Ecclesiastes. Send out your bread upon the waters, for after many days you will get it back. Divide your means seven ways, or even eight, for you do not know what disaster may happen on earth. When clouds are full, they empty rain on the earth. When a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. Whoever observes the wind will not sow, and whoever regards the clouds will not reap. Just as you do not know how the breath comes to the bones in the mother's womb, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and at evening do not let your hands be idle, for you do not know which will prosper, this or that, or whether both alike will be good. Light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. Even those who live many years should rejoice in them all, Yet let them remember that the days of darkness will be many. All that comes is vanity. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we'll use our psalm as a response to that reading, Psalm 71. Page 795. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent, portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all day long. Do not cast me off in my old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Go after him and seize him, because there is none who will save. O oh God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O oh my God. For those who set themselves against me be put to shame and be, and be disgraced. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But I shall always wait in patience and shall praise you more and more. My mouth shall recount your mighty deeds, acts, and your saving deeds all day long, though I cannot know the number of them. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. 
And now that I am old and gray-headed, O God, do not forsake me, till I make known your strength to this generation and your power to all who are to come. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. You have done great things. Who is like you, O God? You have showed me great troubles and adversities, but you will restore my life and bring me up again from the deep places of the earth. You strengthen me more and more. You enfold and comfort me. Therefore, I will praise you upon the lyre for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing to you with the harp, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing with joy when I play to you, and so will my soul, which you have redeemed. My tongue will proclaim your righteousness all day long, for they are ashamed and disgraced who sought to do me harm. Holy God, be our strength and our salvation, that we may never be ashamed to praise you for your mighty acts. We ask this through Jesus Christ. Amen. And our second reading is from Paul's letter to the Galatians. Live by the Spirit. I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our affirmation of faith, let us say the Shema, the Hear, O Israel, on page 53. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. So we're going to use the responsive intercession that is found on page 126, omitting the penitential section. In, pre, in peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for all those who are alone, for this community, our country, and the world, 
for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Andrew, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For our own needs and those of others. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all those who have died in the peace of Christ and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Gracious God, you have heard the great prayers of your faithful people. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Grant our requests as may be best for us. This we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for your servant Columba of Iona, whom you called to preach the gospel to the picts and gulls of Scotland. Raise up in this land and every land heralds and evangelists, scholars, teachers, and diplomats of your kingdom, that your church may make known your immeasur the immeasurable richness of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Eternal God, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit that we may give ourselves today in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And gathering our prayers and thanksgivings into one, let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. I wish you a productive and blessed day. Bye.